See, what we've done so far is um, in this unit, you know, we've covered uh, three learning outcomes, but in what have we covered in the three learning outcomes, one of the things we started off with was to understand the role of, you know, uh, strategic management and marketing within travel and tourism and hospitality mm -hmm. sector. Now, we looked at some theoretical approaches of how strategy and management came about and, you know, has, as the field has grown, how the importance of this field has come into the uh, THM sector, travel, hospitality and management sector, or travel, tourism and man management sector. Now, mm -hmm. the things that we have looked at were that, you know, because of the advancement of technology, with the advent of social media, with mobility generally increasing, uh, what people have been able to do is travel. And now they've been able to, you know, go on vacation and, you know, obviously go to different destinations. Now, because this is the biggest employer in the world, so the industry is also growing rapidly. And because of the rapid pace of the growth in this industry, what has happened is a lot of, um, you know, ancillary sectors have come up so when we think of travel and tourism we generally think of you know just the hotels and maybe resorts and things like that but people seldom realize that you know when we talk about uh, thm as a sector it also includes airlines you know operators any sort of uh, you know uh, um you know ancillary industries which include restaurants takeaways you know uh, loads of other things events management uh, which are all a part of this industry now, as the industry has grown, as the sector has opened up, what has happened is the need for marketing or management has come into this particular sector because it generates a lot of revenue. A lot of people travel. And what we initially looked at was that the, you know, the industry is um, well employing 750 million people around the world. It has a turnover, which is in trillions of dollars. So there's a need for management and obviously, uh, you know, marketing, which is coming to the sector as the sector has grown over the years. And this has especially been true for uh, the time frame after the 1980s. Now, so in the second learning outcome, we looked at the approach, uh, why management has come in, how the management. So in the first learning outcome, we looked at why strategic management. We looked at the basic concepts of understanding how they are relevant to this sector. In the second learning outcome, we applied some of these concepts of strategic marketing, looked at product concept, sales concept, production concept, and you know how this is relevant to the hospitality business. Now, in the third learning outcome, we looked at basically some developments in technology and how technology in particular has impacted, <coughs> sorry, how technology in particular has impacted this sector because this this is where we touched upon things like the booking system, the ability to be able to search and compare, you know, uh, the availability of locations coming in on online. So you can actually see inventory online and, you know, you could do bookings. You, it led to the, um, to a certain extent, the creation of intermediaries, but also we do see the traditional demise of intermediaries like the booking agents and other bits and pieces are disappearing and everything is moving online. We okay. then also looked at briefly how you know some of the issues in terms of security are important because this is one sector just like the health sector which com compares collects uh, you know and also analyzes a lot of data which is related to customers so because the records are stored and the idea is that the operators uh, or the you know players within this sector essentially want um, you know um, what do you call it? more and more data to tailor services that has meant that you know the uh, the importance of data has also grown but in in general the data uh, requirements which are in terms of storage analysis dissemination also threw up challenges of security now in the fourth learning outcome we are going to learn to understand that how this particular sector looks at contemporary issues so when we talk about you know issues which actually affect this particular sector what we are looking at is understanding that what are the issues which typically you know um from a from a sense of you know um when i use the word contemporary that means you know they all occur at the same time so when you are trying to book uh, a say a hotel what you will see is that you are not only just putting your personal information, but you're putting your financial information, your credit card, other details, but also in terms of all giving out your preferences and you know who all are going to be traveling with you. Mm -hmm. So the idea of understanding with the advancement of technology is we need to understand how, uh, you know, and what are the contemporary issues which affect the sector and how they are dealt with in particular when we look at 
you know the sector handling uh, these issues simultaneously so some of the issues that are current and relevant is what we will discuss and i think i've kind of summarized this into you know three issues um for us to basically go through today and then i will send you a detailed handout which will give you some more additional reading into why these are issues how they are uh, identified and basically you know how they are dealt with at different levels when we talk about a hotel when we talk about a resort or an operator or things like that okay so okay. let's look at some of the slides now contemporary issues means you know the word definition of contemporary is that the, it means that things which can happen at the same time so we are looking at issues which are looking at changing the sector they happen on a daily basis it's a routine that most of the people working within the sector face these issues and these issues because they occur they also lead to some changes happening at a very large scale so when i say changing happening that means one of the key things is technology is changing on a daily basis um things like when we look at a comparison site like hotels and other bits and pieces what we do get to see is that you know the prices of the rooms change every day and because the prices of the rooms change every day or the the tourism packages or the holiday packages change every day what you are basically saying is that kind of poses a issue because when you are trying to book in as an operator or as a customer a particular package or a holiday uh, you know for your family you see so many options but you have to then choose and compare and look at which options are the best which options uh, kind of sound to be too good to be true and some of the options wherein you are looking at you know value for money so one of the things is that we look at clearly is that these issues which happen uh, you know within the sector or are faced by the sector they have a huge impact on the business operations now if a hotel is to drop the price uh, of its rooms just to get some bookings in that would mean that they might drop the price to say okay we are not getting bookings but in a span of 10 minutes 15 minutes the entire bookings would have gone uh, you know for for that price and that would mean that would mean that you know they will not be able to kind of you know provide uh, they will not be able to provide what do you call you know these services to some of the other uh, interested uh, you know operators or agents that they work with so a typical situation is during the winters here in the uk for example when the bookings and everything reduces what most hotels tend to do is they start to offer bulk discounts to operators to you know travel agents and things like that to get the bookings in for the hotel and they tend to concentrate on more the business side of the market but what it does is at that point in time one hotel reducing the cost has an impact on the business operations of the entire sector because that means that if one starts to offer low prices what will happen is the others are also forced to follow suit to be able to kind of have some offers of a similar nature in place and that then becomes an issue that it leads to a bit of a price war if i have to use that word now the other thing is because some of these things can now be managed at a click of a button so if you have to decide pricing of the rooms you know most hotels when they are advertising they will be able to use technology in terms of you know if they are changing the prices on the website or things like that they can quickly change the prices and advertise using a tweet or a social media site that okay these are things uh, or these are offers that we're going to put out so one of the key things that we look at is that one uh, particular operator one particular uh, you know hotel if they change look at leading this change in the offers or bringing down the price it kind of generally starts to affect the entire sector or the entire place in a particular location uh, you know with regards to you know prices for the rooms is that okay so let's look at then get into a bit more detail let's look at the three issues in a bit more detail what are the three issues now one of the key things is that technological advancement that means any update which is happening in technology now whether that's something which has been done by a hotel then others have to follow suit because they then seem to be not having uh, that particular offering as against some of the hotels now a typical example that i would give you here that when you look at virtual 3d tours you know uh, a lot of hotels which are premium hotels when they advertise you know rooms and other things that is fine but they have to also look at selling some of the premium services things like you know presidential suites or you know suites in general now when they look at that in order for them to entice customers what they have to do is when this as a uh, thing came into the industry what a lot of hotels did was that it started off i think with the marriott chain 
they basically started to do 3D virtual tours or virtual tours essentially of these rooms so that the customers could actually experience this first hand even before looking at booking because some of these bookings were very difficult to manage. They were always not utilized and the hotel had to discount a lot of these suites in order to attract customers heavily on terms of prices. So in order to attract, kind of build on that option, what they did was they started to build tours and these tours were then integrated onto the website. So when you book a room today, which is beyond a certain value, what you do get to see is an option or an opportunity to virtually view that room even before you book it. So you get to see what facilities it provides. You get to see things like, uh, you know, the differences between this and the economy room or economy de deluxe room or a superior suite or things like that. So technology, and if one hotel is to start to do it, then the others will have to follow suit and that means even if they are not looking at investing into upgrades, they have to typically look at doing that because there is no other option for them to uh, not follow suit. Otherwise, they would be seen to not having them as, uh, you know, market leaders, but as in, but as in laggards. That means they are not going to be able to offer some of the features or ask for premium because customers are not able to see it before they book. So in general, when you look at technological advancements happening within the sector, what we do get to see is that this changes dynamics in the uh, in this particular sector quite quickly. It leads to, you know, advanced bookings happening because people want experiences in general in this sector. They, they go in and they want to have a good experience. And these ex this example of the virtual tours essentially was an add on strategy. Uh, you know, to try and sell an experience and get advanced bookings in place for their high-end uh, rooms as far as the hotel was concerned. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. So other things that we look at very briefly is technology obviously is helping to improve the service quality. Now, when I say service quality is that um, it allows them to capture feedback, 360 degree feedback, that means feedback from operator, you know, customer, consumer, all in one go and then this can be analyzed in the background by the marketing or the strategy department to try and build in features which will facilitate a positive experience if the customer is to check into the hotel in the future right so yeah. an example yeah. here would be that when um, you check out from the room you're asked to do an exit quick survey or a questionnaire is given which is just four or five questions and this is primarily checking on the uh, you know, the features of the department or the feedback on the departments that you've used as a service. So it could be laundry, it could be, you know, the 24 hour coffee shop, it could be the features like, you know, the gym or the pool, it could be just the room itself. And these four or five questions, which are, you know, taken as a feedback, are quickly using technology. If you look at 20 years back, it was all done on paper. But now, normally, what most hotels do is they, they give you an iPad or ask you to kind of do this as an optional checkout. When you take the questionnaires and the survey and you pretty much uh, are getting all the data electronically in the back end to be able to analyze it and, you know, get results pretty much straight off hand. Mm -hmm. Some of them ask you to now tweet, uh, you know, on social media saying that if you have liked the experience, then could you, you know, tweet us or, you know, uh, give us something in terms of a like on the Facebook page. And this then tends to build their reputation and, you know, kind of their uh, brand online as well. So technology... Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. So technology is enabling this uh, at a very rapid pace, but also for the ones who are not able to e embrace the use of technology within the sector means that this is becoming an ongoing issue for them because uh, it requires investment in terms of funds, a large scale upgrades if they haven't upgraded for a number of years. Things like, you know, televisions, for example, or for example, the in uh, room viewing systems that we looked at, you know, there were a lot of channels available for entertainment in entertainment flight guides or, you know, things like that. When you look at aircrafts, they always keep upgrading. So when the new airliner, uh, you know, the 777 Dreamliner was introduced, the British Airways upgraded the Talus system, which is their in-flight entertainment system to have more movies, bigger screens. And that kind of forced, you know, the other operators in this area, apart from Emirates and others, uh, you know, to also upgrade and have from a four inch screen to a six inch screen, even in the economy and in the business class and the first class that screen upgraded upgrade was done to a 15 inch, which is like a, almost like a TFT LCD monitor. So what happened was this has pushed 
the other operators to follow suit. This is not an option with them anymore. They have to upgrade. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, Correct. let's look at the second channel. The second channel that we look at is, um, which is an issue as of now, is because of environmental awareness. There is a lot of waste which this sector also produces. You can imagine that, you know, if you're out on a vacation and you go out and have a coffee or you go and have a meal in the coffee shop, what happens is a lot of meals are cooked and these meals are cooked within the cafes or the buffets. And then if they are not served, they have to be done away with. Mm -hmm. It is not something which can be used the next day. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of environmental waste which is being produced within this sector. And this has become a second uh, burning issue in terms of issues which the uh, operators need to solve is that they need to minimize the waste that is being created. If they can't minim uh, minimize, then the waste has to be put into recycling so that it is able to not harm the environment, but the operators are working in tandem with the environment to preserve it and to also kind of, you know, uh, manage it in the location that they are. So when you see a large level, you know, resorts which are opened up, what most government departments do is when they offer these contracts to these departments or, you know, large resort companies, what they do is they kind of offer that you have to maintain the landscaping, you have to kind of maintain the area, create employment, and also look at managing the environment in terms of, you know, wastage and recycling as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the key responsibilities which is put on with these guys. When you look at, you know, uh, independent resorts being created or they give out a section of the beach, for example, or an area within a city. And these people, uh, when they pick up the contracts, it's a long-term commitment that they have to sign into ensure that they are able to preserve the environment and also bear the you know moral responsibility of contributing to uh, protecting the environment preserving the resources and to a certain extent also ensuring that they are developing those resources so that the upkeep of the environment is done in a fair manner mm -hmm. okay now yeah. a lot of waste which gets produced was initially dumped you know um, if we look at uh, for example, the hotel industry in particular, uh, which is the biggest chunk within the travel and tourism sector. But now there are means and measures being put in place to look at recycling and just dumping it into landfills. Right. And this right. over a point in time was realized that it was polluting the groundwater. And because the level of pollution, uh, you know, with the groundwater can affect our water tables and, you know, obviously the fresh water that we consume a lot of these places were asked to basically look at recycling rather than just dumping because dumping uh, basically contributed to increasing the level of pollution from one location they were putting it into landfills and that led to <coughs> sorry that led to <coughs> you know a, a drizzle in terms of um, uh, doing away with the waste for short term but over a point in time these locations were also filled up and used and they were looking at new locations to be able to do, uh, you know, uh, dumpage, uh, dump of the wastage. So over a point in time, I think in most places, in uh, most ministries, and in most cities, you have now this is an issue wherein if you are looking at seeking a license to open a hotel, open a resort, or work within the sector, one of the key pledges that you have to sign on as an operator is that you have to sign on to the environmental pledge in order to preserve the environment and, you know, conserve the environment. Uh, while you still, uh, you know, continue to offer services from that aspect. Okay. 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 Now, the third issue we have kind of touched on this is security because this sector actually looks at, um, you know, collecting a lot of data. That data needs to be stored. So we clearly understand that. But one of the key elements which has stepped into this sector is, uh, you know, terrorism. Now, we have seen over the years a lot of news, a lot of coverage of you know, um, people uh, getting attacked when they're out and about, um, you know, in, on holiday, on holidaying and terrorism as a as a factor has come into a key aspect within security. So when we looked at the last, uh, you know, in the news, Las Vegas shooting, which happened, uh, I think, a couple of weeks back, which was a major lapse. We saw some uh, shootings happening in Sham al Sheikh in Egypt a couple of uh, months back. Now, this has become a mainstay when we talk about security. We're not just talking about data, but here we are talking about terrorism as well. And most hotels now have been asked to look at investing into security. Now, because this is something which you cannot, it's like insurance. So we take insurance, you drive a car, 
-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you take out car insurance. Now you know that you're a perfect driver. You're not going to have an accident, but you still take out insurance because it gives you peace of mind in the event of having an accident. You and the car or the third party driver, uh, you know, is covered. Similarly, yeah. hotels have now been asked to put security measures in place, which would look at, you know, um, countering, uh, you know, terrorism. So when we look at uh, travel and tourism sector in particular, what we do see is that there is an uh, increasing level of security measures now being put or have been asked now to be put by, you know, governments in certain places or in certain areas. Like we, like we look at the Arab Spring, most of the countries within Northwest Africa, Middle East, when they had the revolutions, a lot of tourists were actually affected directly because it led to large scale looting and, you know, um, uh, plundering of, you know, um, tourists in particular in terms of extortions. So that way, most of the hotels that you go to or you book, you will have a peace of mind if you know that there is increased security or the hotel actually invests in security measures to kind of prevent these incidents to happen. Okay. So on a large scale, this has become an issue or a contemporary issue because it's an ongoing issue because this is something you cannot predict. You don't know the frequency, but you still have to have these measures in place to be able to, you know, look at countering this as a, uh, as a problem or an issue. Now, when you look at airlines in particular, what you do get to see is a lot of countries are now in, had increased a level of frisking. So after the 9-11, you see there was a ban on carrying liquids within the aircrafts. And that ban only got lifted, you know, I think in 2015 or 2016, but a lot of airports in Europe and in America, they still have that ban wherein what they don't allow is they don't allow any form of liquid or, you know, any form of uh, liquid which can, uh, apart from baby milk and things like that, to be. And these are obviously contribute security measures because what they want is an additional level of security which will allow any such incident to happen in the future. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So when we look at, you know, um, some of the aircraft bombings which happened, I think the last one, <coughs> last one that I can uh, think of was the, you know, the Libya bombing, uh, which typically happened over Scotland uh, for an aircraft from Air Canada or something like that, if I remember. And that was, you know, um, uh, one of the large scale air disasters. There was one which happened, um, I think a couple of, months now probably about a year and a half back when the annexation of Crimea happened by Russia one of the Ukrainian aircrafts were down or downed by you know a, a missile mm -hmm. that led to the loss of 300 passengers and that was nothing but an act of terrorism so mm -hmm. these things and there was another uh, one I think I can recall a couple of months back when a Russian aircraft which flew off from Egypt actually blew up in the air and that was down to explosion happening in the aircraft. I think that was last year, September, October. So increased terrorism is also, uh, you know, or the effect of that as it, uh, on this sector is looking at, you know, making uh, tougher security measures come in so that uh, it does not lead to loss of life. And also it gives a peace of mind to the tourist or the traveler who's actually going in, you know, availing, uh, a particular, uh, you know, say a holiday in a particular destination. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Any questions on this so far? So far, no. So far, no. Everything, okay. good. Everything good. Stuff. Good stuff. So now, basically, what I've done here is the handout that I'm going to send to send to you will basically look at covering why do we look at you know uh, doing research and how research helps actually plan strategy within the sector. So there are a few slides that I've included, which basically have, uh, you know, some details about, um, you know, the definition of obviously just to refresh strategic marketing, what are the marketing strategies which are employed within this sector. And then what we want to be able to do is develop this into, uh, you know, research that how these strategies actually help you to collect data, the data, the industry collects the consumer data. And this data then allows the hotels or the, uh, you know, operators who are collecting the data to be analyzed internally to be able to produce meaningful knowledge and information which can then be used for marketing purposes to kind of you know attract customers and provide better experience in terms of uh, you know uh, stay arrangements or you know better experience in terms of uh, tourism when these services are offered is that okay so this is something that i'm not going to go through uh, in today's session because um 
we want to cover this up in a bit more detail when we look at building some uh, you know basic things up uh, as far as you know um, research is concerned so mm -hmm. let me just quickly uh, <coughs> sorry so what I'm going to do today is after this particular session, I'm going to uh, send you this presentation. But apart from that, I'm going to send you a bit of a detailed email, which will actually kickstart unit six and give you some background in terms of why do we need to do a research? What are the outline and, you know, the key sections in which research is done? And in conjunction with that, what I'm going to send you is, a, uh, you know, research handout, which basically will be like an ebook. But this is something that you need to go through in a bit more detail so that you are absolutely crystal on the task 4.1. But right. you're also right. going to be using this for your unit six. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Okay. So this is something which is a bit of a reading that you need to do. But apart from that, we will do an overview of this particular, uh, you know, a unit, which is section 4.1. Right in. Mm -hmm. uh, unit uh, section of, uh, you know, unit, uh, sorry, AC 4.1, but also we'll start off this unit, uh, which is advanced research for business managers, uh, which is unit six in your, uh, in, in your course. Okay. okay. Now, okay. this unit is something which is going to be directly related to your MBA top up as well. Oh, because oh, this okay. unit okay. you are going to be using to do a dissertation and it is important for you to kind of understand and put a lot of emphasis on this unit because what I would suggest you to do is in order to not to increase your work, what you're going to do is when we pick up unit six from our side and start mm -hmm. to do that, what we are going to do is, um, so what I need to do is basically this unit, this assignment that you do is going to be four and a half thousand words. But as you are going to start your MBA top up program, this is something that you will need to do. Uh, this particular unit is something that you'll need to do uh, in about 15 and a half thousand words or 15,000 words for the top up. So what we are going to do is when we teach you this unit out from my aspect, what we are going to do is we are going to teach you in a bit more detail because when we know the university teaches it, they only do one, one webinar and they send you this particular guide, which I've opened up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you're on your own to get feedback. And, you know, obviously you have to write the 15,000 words, the topics and all those things yourself. So this unit carries about 50 credits in your MBA top up, but obviously about 20 credits in your level seven. So what okay. is okay. why is it important is if you do this unit quite well in your MBA top up, you're looking at moving your grade to merit or, you know, even higher. All right. All right. So my session to you is when I send you this email today after the session, you will need to start reading it through now so that mm -hmm. when you develop your research for uh, the unit, which is going to be a bit of a subset or, you know, a whole when you expand it for your uh, dissertation. All right. right? All right. So or if I have to just uh, simplify this and explain with an example would be, that I would suggest that you pick up an area of research, for example, within the tourism sector, if you want to, and you would want to kind of say um, uh, things like, for example, I want to study the impact of, say, brand and its impact on a particular destination. So a particular destination could be your resort. Now, in this, oh, what you're oh, looking oh. at doing is you're looking at picking up an independent variable and a few dependent variables. Now, independent variable is going to be something which is the sector. That means tourism sector, because whether you do a research in tourism sector or somewhere else, that sector still stands. That is why it is independent variable. And the dependent variables will be you're studying brand equity or the impact of branding and brand equity on your resort. So these two then become dependent, dependent variables that you're going to study in relation to the tourism and hospitality sector. And this particular unit we are going to do in about uh, four or five, five chapters, essentially. So what we are going to do is develop an introduction first. Once we develop an introduction, then we will expand this into literature review. Once the literature review is done, we will get into something called research methodology. When we do the research methodology, after that, you have to collect data or do sampling and, you know, go out and collect data through Google surveys or SurveyMonkey and things like that. And once you collect the data, then you present your findings, uh, tabulate your findings, present your findings. And then in the last one, you kind of, you know, conclude, make recommendations and talk about, you know, issues that you face within the research while you are doing it. 
and that will okay. consist okay. of about 15,000 words. All right. All right. <coughs> so that what is I have explained here. So we start with a bit of background, problem statement, research aim and objectives, questions that you'll put in the research. I've given you some examples of how the research objectives could be, what is dependent variable. And then in uh, towards the end, what I've suggested you to do is you are looking at developing this into a 15,000 word uh, dissertation, which you will submit for your MBA top up. That uh -huh. we will use uh -huh. here to cover your assignment. So it will not require you to do work twice on this unit. Oh, good. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that is it for, uh, you know, um, in terms of just explaining and what we're going to do is do the teaching on this unit from uh, next week, which is going to be the session uh, taking up the advanced business research unit, uh, you know, with regards to your, uh, you know, your course. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, great. Any questions on, uh, you know, unit one so far? So far, no questions. Everything is good. Yeah. Good stuff. What we'll do is we'll close this session for today uh, with uh, also closing unit one. I'm going to send you some handouts which I've already prepared, you know, for uh, your, um, you know, learning outcome four and also a bit of uh, a reading along with this presentation that I'm send, sending you, which will give you some details of why we, basically some details for you to be able to study uh, to understand contemporary issues. All right, sure, sure. Okay, good stuff. Yep. And yep. what I would suggest now is that within the next week, 10, 10 days, my suggestion will, to you will be that if you start working on a draft document of your assignment for unit one. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then what we are going to do is, I think, as as always, you know, you'll get the invite for Thursday, oblique Sunday, uh, Thursday, oblique Saturday for covering the unit or starting the unit six, which is research. All right, sure. Okay. Okay. So, so, <clears throat> I will then hopefully catch up with you later this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, 